I have a dream, that's all I need I'll make it happen with some work and belief Know what I want Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Today in this video, I am going to explain coagulation of blood Let's get started Coagulation, also known as clotting Clotting is a process by which the blood loses its fluidity and becomes a jelly-like mass few minutes after it is shed out. Clotting occurs only when there is blood loss from a damaged blood vessel. Factors involved in blood clotting. These are the factors. Sequence of clotting mechanism. Enzyme cascade theory. Most of the clotting factors are proteins in the form of enzymes. The clotting factors which are in the form of inactive proenzyme must be converted to activated enzyme to enforce clot formation. Inactive proenzyme clotting factors Activated enzyme begins clot formation. It is carried out by a series of proenzyme enzyme conversion reactions like first like first proenzyme becomes first activated enzyme First activated enzyme activates second proenzyme. Second proenzyme into second activated enzyme. It activates third proenzyme into third activated enzyme. And so on till fibrin is formed. Stages of blood clotting. Stages. There are three stages. Number one, formation of prothrombin activator. Number two, conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. Number three, Conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Let's see stage 1 formation of prothrombin activator. It occurs through a two pathways intrinsic and extrinsic. First, we look intrinsic pathway. During the injury, blood vessel is ruptured, endothelial damage occurs, collagen is exposed. Factor 12 that is Hedgeman factor converts to activated factor 12 in the presence of calicrin and high molecular weight kininogen. The activated factor 12 converts factor 11 to activated factor 11 in the presence of high molecular weight kininogen. The activated factor 11 activates factor 9 in the presence of calcium. The activated factor 9 activates factor 10 in the presence of factor 8 and calcium when platelets comes into contact with collagen it gets activated and releases phospholipids activated factor 10 reacts with reacts with platelet phospholipids and factor 5 to form prothrombin activator this needs the presence of calcium ions factor 5 is also activated by positive feedback effects of thrombin the formation of thrombin activator is initiated by platelets. Extrinsic pathway Injured damaged tissues releases tissue thromboplastin. Thromboplastin contains proteins, phospholipid, glycoprotein. They act as proteolytic enzymes. Glycoprotein and phospholipid components of throm thromboplastin converts factor 10 to activated factor 10. In the presence of factor 7, activated factor 10 re reacts with factor 5 and phospholipid to form prothrombin activator. This, this reaction requires presence of calcium ions. The formation of prothrombin activator is initiated by tissue thromboplastin. With this, the stage 1 is completed. Next, stage 2, conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. Prothrombin activator formed due to intrinsic and extrinsic pathways converts prothrombin to thrombin in the presence of calcium formation of more and more thrombin molecules occurs the initially formed thrombin activates factor 5 this in turn accelerates both intrinsic and extrinsic prothrombin activators this effect of thrombin is called positive feedback with this stage 2 also completed let's see third stage Conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Thrombin converts inactive fibrinogen to, act to activated fibrinogen. This activated fibrinogen is called fibrin monomer. 
the fibrin monomer undergoes polymerization to form loosely arranged strands of fibrin later these loose strands are modified into dense tight fibrin threads in the presence of factor 13 fibrin stabilizing factor and calcium ions all the tight fibrin threads are aggregated to form meshwork of stable clock with this all the three stages of blood coagulation was completed and clot is formed please do remember to subscribe to my channel my name is Srinivas and thank you so much for watching